Hi, I'm Jimmy. In this video, we're gonna look at a short list of stocks that I really wanna buy, but I need them to fall at least below my calculation of an ideal entry point. Now, this is a list that I've called my bucket list of stocks, and I've made videos on each of these stocks in the past. So, I'll leave a link in the description below to the video for each of these stocks if you're curious. Now, recently, ever since we started the new Learn to Invest channel, well, I've had the opportunity to update my calculation of fair value for many of the stocks on this bucket list. Okay, now I've got a few different details that I keep for my bucket list. It's usually just an Excel spreadsheet that I track different information. For example, I have the ticker symbol, company name, that's basic information. Then I have this first column here is the date I did the last valuation for that company. So not necessarily the last time I did the research, but the date that I did the actual valuation and then what the value of that, the calculation turned out to be, what the fair value of the stock looks to be. Then I have a margin of safety for each stock, and then that gives me my ideal entry point. Ideally, I wanna buy it at some price below that price. And then I threw in there the current price of the stock as of the recording of this video, just so we all have something to compare it to. And let me just show you the whole list here. Well, this is the entire list. You can see I keep the list fairly short, but now let me run through some of the reasons why each of these names are on this list. So the first stock on this list is Disney. And Disney's the stock I actually already own, but I would love to buy more. This is one of the companies that I really, really like, but it is way far away from what I calculate to be the fair value of the stock. And I have a margin of safety for this stock just of just 5%. That's the lowest one on the whole list. And for anyone unfamiliar with the concept of margin of safety, well, basically what we do is we calculate what we believe to be the fair value of the stock. Maybe we do that using something like discounted cash flow. That's what I did in the case of Disney. Well, we come up with the fair value and then we say, okay, since we know the fair value is calculated using estimates of some future, we believe something that could happen in the future, there's clearly going to be some risk of that not happening. So we add a buffer zone, a margin of safety. We add an area that, okay, what if we're wrong? Let's add a little to that and then we'll buy below that. That's really what the margin of safety does. For me, I usually add a larger margin of safety if I'm less confident in the, let's say my calculation of fair value. So for something like Disney, well, I'm fairly confident that if I could get it at $105, that would be a very good purchase so I can add a very small margin of safety. Now, when I did buy my shares of Disney, it was back when COVID hit last year, the stock pulled below 100, surprisingly dropped below $100 per share. I jumped, I jumped in and bought as much as I could at that time because I had done my calculation shortly before that as well, and I ended up about the same fair value. So again, I was more than happy to buy this stock when it got anywhere near my level of margin of safety. Now, I could easily make the case that Microsoft, the second company on this list, should easily have the same margin of safety as Disney, since this is another company that I really, really like. And frankly, the only reason that Microsoft is at 10% while Disney's at 5% is that micro I used to have this rule that I wanted to have a minimum margin of safety. And I had set out and made that rule uh, 10%. But then the stock market tanked last year and I got trigger happy with Disney and I sort of violated my own rule. And in doing that, I realized that some companies, you don't really have to have much of a margin of safety at all. Now, I don't feel comfortable having no margin of safety, so I try to add at least 5%, but a stock like Disney or even Microsoft, when it gets below my calculation of fair value, I'm generally pretty happy to jump in. But again, I think it's important that we look at the margin of safety as that buffer zone. I'm okay with the fact that I've played with the rules a little bit, my own personal rules, as far as a margin of safety. Now, what I won't do, or what I really try hard not to do, is play with my rules and buy it above what I calculate the fair value to be. I I try very hard to stick with how I calculate the fair value and not, not fudge those numbers to make it look more desirable just because I want to be involved in a company. I try to buy them at least below the calculation of fair value, and that has served me well over the long time that I've been investing. I think when to buy the stock is sort of it's more in the art of investing than it is the more analytical, hard-based rules of investing that many of us have and should stick with. Okay, now a good example of a, the art form of this is a stock like Peloton. Peloton, I, re I researched Peloton last month and I said I really liked it, came up with a fair value for, of $105 per share, but I recognized that there are some risks to Peloton's business, specifically now. 
they're coming off of a recall, and they're, we're coming out of the COVID shutdown, so how booming is their business going to be right now? So with that hesitancy, will I add a larger margin of safety? Now, I did want to buy it at the, at the time I did the video. The stock was trading slightly below $85. But then I wait a few days after the stock, after I'd released the video, and the stock starts to rally. It was above my ideal entry price, so I didn't jump in. Today, the stock is above, it's slightly above my calculation of fair value, so I will not be jumping in it anytime soon unless it gets below 85. But this is a good example of one where I missed the opportunity, and that was largely because I just, I'm trying hard to stick with the rules that I created. And I firmly believe that if we come up with our own investing rules and we stick with those rules and those rules are logical and sound, over the long run, we're bound to do very, very well with investments. Okay, then we have stocks like CVS and Apple. Both of these companies are companies that have updated our fair value calculation, but it's been a while since I've done a deeper dive on either company. I've got Apple coming up soon. I've already started researching that one. I'll be doing a review of that company in the not too distant future. And when I do a deeper dive, that's generally when I get to determine my level of confidence. And that's really when I set the margin of safety at that point. And we may be able to tell that I'm more confident in my re research of Apple than I am of CVS, but I would be happy owning either stock at the right price. Okay, then we have AutoZone. Now, AutoZone, it's been a while since I looked at this company, and it's even been a while since I came up with a fair value. I'll be, I'll be likely updating the fair value over on our YouTube, sh on our Learn to Invest short channel, uh, where we do short videos, quick valuation videos. And at that point, we'll be sure that these numbers still hold true. But this is a stock that I liked, and I've kept on this list because when I did my research, I found that through various recessions, this stock has done very, very well. So I think it could be a good diversifier for most investment portfolios. Now, I'm not 100% sure that has held up through COVID. I'll find out in the research. My guess is it probably hasn't. But either way, it's one that I've kept on the bucket list just in case it is, it is still very good. Okay, then we've got both Home Depot and Lowe's. And I really like both of these companies. I really like their business models in general. And we can see that Lowe's isn't too far off of our calculation of fair value. It's not too far away from the ideal entry price. Now, I'd like to update my research and do more in-depth research on the company. I've done a short just recently. That's where I got these updated numbers. But I'd like to make sure that nothing crazy has happened that has caused the stock to be this low in a stock market that, let's face it, is fairly overvalued at this point. So I'll be updating that in the not too distant future as well. Okay, now, for anybody who has seen my recent video I did on my personal investment portfolio, well, you may know that I also own shares of both Lockheed Martin and Intel. And both of those stocks are not on this list. And frankly, that's because I'm perfectly happy with my positions, both of those positions that I currently own. I have little interest in buying more. Now, sure, if this stocks, if either one of those stocks dropped a huge amount, then I might very well add them back to this list or jump in and buy more. But for now, I'd rather be looking in other, I'd be looking for other opportunities. I have very little interest in buying more of those companies just because I'm happy with the position. I don't think I, it adds too much if I jump in and buy more at this point. And another reason that those two companies are off this list is you may notice here, I keep a fairly short list. And I, that's mostly because I think it makes the most sense to limit the number of companies that we're watching closely. I could easily have a list of companies I'm interested in buying be 50, 60, 100 companies long. But to me, that, it, that would be so difficult to track over the long run that I think we're far better off narrowing it down to a handful of companies, wait for those, and just keep researching companies and look for great investments to jump in and buy. And in doing that kind of research, well, that's how we end up with our confidence level that ultimately leads to us picking a reasonable margin of safety. Now, if you're curious about how to come up with that, the, how to identify your own confidence level or how to identify a good margin of safety, well, I actually did a video called When to Buy a Stock that looks at this exact topic. So if you're curious, perhaps that's a good next video for you to watch. I got a link right here. I got a link in the description below. And thank you so much for sticking with me all the way to the end of the video. I really appreciate it. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.